Let me tell y'all something about King David. See, when I came out and started addressing certain questions to certain people, I started getting a lot of attacks toward me, specifically about being gay. Oh, he's gay. He's giving King David a bad name. He should be called Queen David. And it's just comment after comment after comment on this video that was posted about me talking about I'm gay. But let me tell you about King David. When you read the scriptures, which you all say you believe, and this is in Torah, this is in the Old Testament. When you read in there, you read about King David. And when you read about him, you read about certain character traits that he had. How he was not expected to be king. When Samuel came to anoint King David, Jesse did not bring David into the house. He kept him out there with the sheep. Okay? So we see something that he's not expected to be king. So that's the first thing that we notice. Because the Most High says, you judge outward appearance, I judge the heart. So we see that David is judged by his heart. That's what Abba is looking at. The one you guys say you serve. So let's see a couple things about David. David had a soulmate relationship with a man named Jonathan. They made a soul oath or a pact. Did they not? And it says their souls were knit. That means a soulmate. Doesn't it doesn't that not mean that, guys? So he was a soulmate with a male. Now we know that David had many wives. We know the story about Bathsheba, about how he came on your Uriah's wife. You see? So what is this relationship that he has with Jonathan? It says they kissed. Now we know this doesn't mean sensual because we know that it's written that David is a mighty man, a valiant man, a mighty man of war, a man after God's own heart. He's the most high's anointed one. So how, if the most high says man should not lay with men as he lay with women, then how does David have a soul tie with a man? Well, obviously he's not laying with him or he, or the most high wouldn't have anointed him. He would be desecrating the anointing. Would he not be? So obviously this relationship that he has is a higher level than you niggas understand. Because if you knew that if you know that scripture, then you know that David has a reputation for having a gay relationship with Jonathan when that's not the case. So that means he was accused of being gay. He is to this day by some people still. Because of that scripture about Jonathan. Where they fell on each other's neck and wept and kissed each other and cried. See, because you don't understand, you've never been in the thick of battle with your brother. With life or death. Fighting for each other's life together. It creates a bond that most of you niggas don't understand. You see that? They fought side by side in war and in battle together. And when Jonathan died, David wrote a song about him. David was a compassionate king, and that's what you all don't understand. That's why you all don't accept love, because you don't have compassion in your hearts. So you would never recognize your King David. You would call him gay. Just like I'm sure many assume that he was because of his relationship with Jonathan. Because it says they kissed each other. Now all you guys can think of is some kind of lust-filled kissing on the lips. No. You have a son, you kiss your son. Because you love him. It's called brotherly love, Philadelphia. <laughs> Loving your brother as yourself. Being tender hearted. Remember the curse of Deuteronomy? The tender and delicate man among you shall turn evil. So Abba has set it up where his men are tender and delicate with those that he loves. But his enemies, he's a ferocious lion. And that's what David was. David played a harp. That requires sensitivity. David wrote psalms. That requires sensitivity. He sang songs. He danced. That requires sensitivity. He had feeling. Saul tried to kill David on several occasions. 
He tried to murder David on several occasions, guys. And when David had to drop on, on Saul, he gave him compassion. And he was humble. And he bowed before Saul with his face to the ground. And his men were tripped out. Oh my goodness, what is he doing? You could have got Saul right there. You had him. He even had a piece of Saul's garment in his hand to show, hey man, look, I ain't trying to kill you. What's this evil that they've been speaking about me? I'm not trying to kill you. I ain't going to put my hand to the Lord's anointed. You see? So here we see that he has made a soul knit relationship with the man and they love each other. He says, oh, by the way, he says that the love that, he, that Jonathan had in the song he wrote about Jonathan, he said, the love that you had for me was better than the love of a woman. So you guys would say he's gay then. Now, according to scripture, was there any proof that David was a gay man? That he had gay sexual relations? No. No. We know that he had multiple wives, many concubines. We know this, many children. And he was a man after God's own heart and a crown remained on his head until he transitioned. We know this. So had he, had, had he been a homosexual, do you think the Most High's anointing would have remained on him? Saul was demoted. <laughs> the anointing re was removed from Saul because Saul disobeyed the Most High's command to kill all the Amalekites. He didn't do it. He left some remaining. So he got demoted immediately. But David can have gay relationships and still be the king. And then his son reigned next. Come on, guys. So obviously, this about brotherly love, having equal love for your brother and sister. Because why should I give each one less than the other? Because the only way you don't understand that is if your heart is filled with lust. See, your heart is not purified enough to understand that when you see your brother, you should be able to hug him. Put your arm around him, man. Ask him how the hell he's doing, really. Instead of this stiff ass shaking his hand all hard. What's up, brother? Yeah, hell yeah. Sticking your chest all out to his dick measuring. That's what's gay. As soon as the accusations start coming, man, you might as well assume that that's what the person is that's accusing you of this shit. As soon as you bring up love, the nigga says you're gay. Well, then what do that mean about you? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, man. So how did that just burst out of your heart because somebody said we should love each other? When that's what King David was showing us all. Stop being so fucking hateful and killing each other and start loving each other and giving each other compassion. Because he was a king of compassion. That's what he was showing when he gave Saul that grace. And that's what Abba wants, a balanced person he doesn't want an imbalanced man on the throne too masculine too feminine can't understand either energy if solomon was not in his feminine energy then how did he know what the two women were thinking with the child how did he know how to think on that level he was able to tap into his own feminine energy within himself man got an xy gene but he ain't x and y you just deny that shit. No, he's just why. That's all he is. That's toxic masculinity, man. That's unbalanced. You won't be able to be tender with your child if you're like that. You won't be able to pick them up if they fall tenderly. You're going to be that nigga that say, get your ass up. You all right? The baby screaming, knee bleeding like a motherfucker. You all right? Get up. You don't even give him no tenderness. Just like the scripture said you would do because you're over masculine now. You wanted to rule so bad over the woman. Now you got it, nigga. Now you all man. Now you're ruling. Look at your ass. Instead of sitting next to her on the throne, you want to rule over her. And all you niggas that's like that, that's all you doing. And all you women that's accepting that, that's because you a feminist. All you want to do is rule over the man. So you agree with the same teachings. And that's why you don't understand how a man can have a soul knit relationship with the man and still have multiple wives and have children. You don't understand that. Because I'm telling you right now, if I go to battle with a nigga, I want to go to a battle with a nigga I trust. Shit. I want to go to a battle. I want to go to a battle with a nigga that I know is going to fight for me. I know he's not a coward. I know he's going to have my back. Not I wonder what he's going to do. So if I go into a battle with a soul knit nigga, we good. You see?
We got each other's back for real. We gonna love each other through this shit. Cause how is a nigga gonna have my back if he don't love me? All the way love me. As himself. Y'all niggas cannot go to battle because you are not unified. Because you don't understand love. If I love my brother as myself, then when something threat is coming to him, if I'm on the battlefield, I see a threat coming to him, I will sacrifice myself for him on that battlefield. Without question. And that's the kind of soldiers we are called to be. But y'all don't under, y'all don't exercise that brotherly love. You don't exercise that Philadelphia within you. Because in order to extend that love out, you got to tap into your feminine energy. Fathers, when your son does something that disappoints you, you have to be able to reach your hand out to him, put your hand on top of his head and say, it's okay, son. I'm not mad at you. You tried your best. That's a feminine energy. But you have to be able to tap into that so your son can be healed. But y'all are running from that because you think it's weak. But it's your power because it's going, you're going to see your son counting his rise when you do that. You're going to see his strength and his spirit just recover. His soul being restored. You're going to see it. Husbands, when you're with your wife and your wife do something that disappoints you, you don't have to be angry. Just show her the weed. Tenderly. Baby, I know you're disappointed in yourself and I ain't going to heap more on you by me being disappointed with you. Because I know you already know. So let's just pull this weed together. And let's work on not allowing weeds like that to grow anymore. Tenderness. Feminine energy. But you're a male and there's nothing wrong with it. But if you're not in touch with that because you deny it, because you're afraid of it, then you can't come into it. You can't embrace brotherly love and you won't have a unified nation. For all of you niggas that denying this. How are you going to have anything without love? How are you going to have soldiers without love? How are you going to win the battle without love for each other? How are you going to do that? So like I said, you guys don't know David at all. You don't know who he is. He's fi. He's equally balanced. On both sides. He has to be in order to be king. Just like the queen. But y'all don't understand that. You don't understand the phoenix gene. You don't understand the King David gene. Y'all don't understand this at all. But without getting into all of that, that's all I want to say. You guys don't understand David. Because if you did, then you'd know that. So you was, so thank you all for accusing me of being gay because you're just confirming who I am even more by doing that. Because you have no proof of me being gay. You're just saying it. So therefore it's not true, just like it wasn't true with David, but you have some feeling that makes you want to say it and you're all saying it and you won't stop saying it. So thank you for confirming who I am.